Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to talk a little bit about revolvers, especially the springs in revolvers. That's the first thing I want to talk about because people ask me all the time, should I change the springs in my revolver? Give it a lighter trigger pull, lighter hammer pull. You know, people ask this because they're so used to changing the springs in their semi-autos. And that's something I do all the time too. I get a semi-automatic gun. I will often change the springs, especially Berettas. I take it down to a 12 pound hammer spring. So I make a lot of changes in my Berettas. But that's not the same thing as changing a revolver. And we'll get into that why that is. The reason it is okay in semi-autos is because a lot of them are made to have a consistent trigger pull most of the time where they're being used because, you know, once you fire that first shot, it's single action every shot after that. So the double action trigger pull at the beginning is a lot heavier than it needs to be. And if you change it down from combat levels to where, you know, they make them heavy so that cops aren't shooting every perp accidentally that they pull a gun on. Uh, when you take that down to what's safe for everyday use, it can be quite a big difference. You can go from like an 18 pound spring to a 12 pound spring. That makes a huge difference. That's a 33% difference in weight. Uh, and it's still leaves the gun very safe and very operable. That extra weight on that uh, first pull wasn't needed to make the gun work. It was just there to make it safe. So that first trigger pull before the light single actions afterwards is good and heavy and doesn't go off accidentally. So changing springs on uh, semi-automatic guns, totally a good idea, especially if it's a duty gun with heavier springs than it needs. However, on revolvers, it's a lot more complicated. I know you're gonna think that's weird that it's more complicated on revolvers since they're a simpler gun. Are they really? I don't really think they're that much simpler. They're simple, but not that much simpler. What makes it more reliable is it's more of a controlled environment. They're actually sandwiched in between pieces, so there's not a lot of room for movement, which is what makes them really reliable, but there's still some intricate stuff going on in there. And when you change springs, you risk making things not work quite right. When you're looking at springs in revolvers, you're mainly looking at two springs, the rebound spring and the hammer spring. Some guns have traditional springs for hammer springs, like the Rugers. They have like a little pole with a spring on it. Uh, other guns have leaf springs. And if you're familiar with cars or trucks, you know the difference between regular springs and leaf springs. Well, like let's say look at a Smith & Wesson. If you change the hammer spring out, that will lighten the pull of the hammer, but it can come with some problems. Since that spring is controlling how hard the hammer hits the bullet or hits the firing pin that hits the bullet, uh, it can make your gun have light strikes if you make it too light. And since every time you pull the trigger, double action on a uh, revolver, you're actually overcoming the tension on that hammer spring, you can make that feel lighter to you, but if you do, you might end up having light primer strikes. Like I said, the gun doesn't work. If it doesn't fire the round, what's the point? So you gotta be real careful when you lighten a hammer spring on a revolver. In fact, some have adjustable uh, hammer springs on them. Smith & Wesson's have that strain screw in the front. And quite often I'll have people say, there's something wrong with this Smith, it's junk, it doesn't fire every other round. And I'll be like, well, let me see it. And I'll be like, uh, your strain screw is screwed all the way out because someone wanted it to feel like a buttery trigger shouldn't feel like a buttery trigger. And a double action trigger on a Smith & Wesson revolver, or most revolvers, you're overcoming a lot. You're working a very complicated mechanism pulling that trigger. It affects everything in there. Every spring in there affects that trigger pull. It's not the same with semi-autos. Some of the springs affect the trigger pull, some of them don't. Like your trigger just releases a sear. The spring on the firing pin controls how hard it hits the round, and you're not overcoming that spring with every pull. That spring is usually put into a position when you cock the gun, when you uh, rack that slide. So the trigger spring is only controlling the trigger and not so much the firing mechanism. In a revolver, that trigger and every spring involved is actually controlling the firing mechanism, the firing pin, and how hard it hits the round. So if you reduce it too much by lightening the hammer spring, you, like I said, could have light strikes. So that's something you have to keep in uh, your mind when you decide to change it. Now, there are reputable spring uh, companies out there. Wolf 
Wilson Combat, that put out kits that you can change. Uh, and they will tell you that you do run the risk of light strikes with hard primer rounds. But if you use a kit from a manufacturer that was designed to go in that gun from a well-known company like Wolf, you're pretty safe. But still, there's things, like I said, you need to think about. Another spring in there, the other spring, I should say, is the rebound spring. And for those of you who don't know what it does, it does put uh, tension on the, hand, on the uh, uh, trigger because it forces the trigger forward. So whenever you pull the trigger backwards, you're feeling the resistance of that spring. But that's not most of the, re uh, the resistance you're feeling. Most of the resistance you're feeling is the hammer spring. In fact, if you ever want to demonstrate this for yourself, go ahead, cock your gun, pull the trigger, and then let the trigger go forward most of the way and pull it back again. That resistance right there, that little bit of resistance you're feeling, that's the actual rebound spring. It's when you let it go back forward and reset with the hammer spring, that's when you feel the resistance of the hammer spring. So that's one way you can feel the difference. As you notice, the rebound spring isn't really that heavy. And in my opinion, doesn't need to be changed. In fact, usually in most of the kits, it only takes it from like 14 to 12. So not a huge difference there. Uh, because it really, what it does is it makes sure the trigger resets fully. And the problem you could have if you lighten that too much is it can make it to where in the actual order of the firing the gun, the trigger doesn't reset fast enough. And you go to try to pull it again, you short stroke the trigger because it didn't reset fast enough. Remember, in a revolver, you don't have that short reset like you do in semi-autos where the first pull is long sometimes on double action, single actions, or just short right from the beginning on some uh, striker fired guns and then have shorter trigger pulls afterwards because of the reset being short. On a revolver, it's necessary that everything goes back to stage one after every firing so that you can once again lock up with the hammer uh, and the trigger and pull the trigger again. If you've got a lightened rebound spring, uh, that trigger might not go forward far enough fast enough and cause you problems, short stroking it. Just like lightening the, uh, and I've been accused of doing that a lot of times, but just like I said, lightening the hammer spring causes firing issues, uh, lightening the rebound spring, especially in conjunction with lightening the hammer spring, can cause just function issues. Trigger's not moving far enough forward, fast enough forward, all of these kind of things working together causes linkages to kink up and things don't work. Your gun just feels like the trigger's dead. Uh, if you remember the video where uh, Hickok was shooting the new Python and he was short stroking the trigger, that can happen very easily, especially with a short, uh, with a shortened, uh, or excuse me, a lightened uh, rebound spring. So if, you go, if you're going to change your springs in your semi-auto, it's usually not that big of a difference. The biggest risk you run is making the trigger too light where you accidentally shoot yourself, which is not a, a light uh, or a small uh, worry. But uh, in a revolver, when you put them too light, you actually run more of a risk of the gun not working. And since they're designed to have that really light single action pull, usually around three pounds, for accuracy at the range, accuracy for self-defense, whatever, you're pretty much set the way they come. You just cock that hammer, bang, really light trigger pull. And if you have to shoot double action, well, it's gonna be heavier, but it needs to be a little heavier because like I said, it's not just releasing a sear, it's actually activating the hammer. So it's overcoming the rebound spring, which is necessary for everything to return to where it is. It's also overcoming the hammer spring so you feel that spring tension being uh, pulled back and it's lighter when you thumb the hammer than it is when you pull the trigger because you know you got a more of a lever when you're pulling the hammer back. You got a longer uh, uh, lever there to actually pull it back so it feels lighter. When you're pulling it with the trigger, it actually feels heavier. So double action triggers on revolvers are just heavy. They kind of need to be for the gun to function. Now you can, like I said, take it down a little bit lighter, but is it really worth it? Is it worth shaving a pound or two off the trigger? If it's like, say, if you've got like a 12 pound trigger, is it worth taking it to 10 if the gun might not work? And usually most double action trigger pulls are a lot less than that. Uh, I think I was doing some trigger pull weights on my live chat the other night and we were getting around seven and a half, eight pounds on my Kiapas. Now, could I take that down to six? Probably could, but why would I want to? It's not gonna be that big of a difference and the single action still be light and I run the risk of making the revolver not work. 
Like I said, that's not as much as a concern with semi-autos, but with revolvers, you just got to be more careful. Like I said, you got to know what those springs do. You got to know why they're stiff. You got to know how it all works and you have to take that into account. Now, like I said, buy yourself a reputable spring kit from most of the com companies like Wolf or Wilson Combat, you'll be fine. But don't go monkeying with it yourself too much because you can really turn a great revolver into a paperweight if you do it wrong. All right, everybody. I went a little over there. I thought I was gonna have time to talk about something else about revolvers, but I underestimated how much I was gonna babble about springs. So I'm done for today now. So I just wanna say thanks to everyone for coming. I do appreciate it. And I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I just wanna remind everyone to always carry, even if it's a revolver you've lightened the springs on, hopefully you've done it right. And stay safe until I see you tomorrow. I want to spend a little time. I love one. But there are reputable kits. This is going off the fucking rails. God damn. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. When they have uh, heavy. <coughs> fuck! <laughs> when you look at the revolver, there's. Um... <sighs> We're familiar with leaf springs. If they. Um... Oh, God. I don't even remember what I'm fucking talking about. I don't even remember my topic for today. To take into account when, uh, and the, uh, fuck, revolver. Why can't I say revolver? It's the semi-auto that's fucking me up. I don't even remember what my fucking topic was. Thanks for everybody for coming today. That didn't make any sense at all. <clears throat>